Hi everyone, how's it going? I know it's been so long since I did an update with you guys, but I've just been kind of busy and also I want to show you guys something. I've been losing my teeth as a result of electronic weapons being fired at my jaw. So if increasingly my smile doesn't look the same as it used to, then you'll know the reason why. I've been losing teeth since I was young. But it's only like within my late 30s that the uh, directed energy weapons and the gang stalkers have really been hammering at my jaw and at my teeth. So that's one thing that I wanted to explain to you guys. Although on top of that, I'm not going to lie to you, my diet isn't the best. So, well, no, it's entirely their fault, but I haven't helped my situation is what I'm saying. So if my smile seems a little bit different, if the way that I speak seems a little bit like saliva-y, it's because I've got problems with my teeth because of the weapons being fired at them. So, um, oh yeah, as for the extractions thing, um, it's just a matter of getting someone to go with me because I live in Brighton and the friends that I have in Brighton, they're not flaky, but they're the type of friends to put their emotional needs first. And unfortunately, that means that I can't always get, you know, to get the person I need. You know, if I've had general anesthetic or if I need general anesthetic to get the tooth extractions out, I'm going to need someone to come with me to the hospital or to the dentist's office um, to see me home. Do you understand what I mean? For safety. So... There's all of those logistics to worry about and to think about. And, you know, on, on top of that, because money's tight, I'd have to think about cab fare as well. So there is, a, there are reasons, like lots of mitigating reasons as to why I haven't gotten this sorted out yet. Um, but yeah, those are some of the updates. There's something that I really want to talk about, but like, like seriously there's something that I really want to talk about but I have to wait until like until until things you know move forward in a sense I'm going to come back to this video and I'm going to make a note to myself about what this situation is but like I'm going to tell you everything once everything unfolds right so that's the second thing there's something that I can't wait to tell you but I can't tell you yet so the thing that I actually wanted to talk about, again, was corporal punishment. Now, I actually covered this before. Um, I've covered like discussions around corporal punishment, but the way that I talked about it last time was really harsh because, you know, there are so many people saying, oh, these kids did a good ass whooping. That's what I got. And I survived. And I'm like, I, I, I used to get so fucking pissed off with that shit because I got spanked as well. And not only did I get spanked, I know so many other people who got worse spankings than me and the kind of people that they turned into and the kind of bullying people that they turned into. So I was really harsh, like with the first video that I made about corporal punishment and stuff like that. But um, at this at this time right now, my interest is not in attacking anybody with different viewpoints to me. Because... This is where my anger is overtaken with sympathy and a sense of pity. I'm sure that if people look at my life, they could pity me too, and, and that's fine. Um, I haven't been spanked as hard as everyone else. Like, I'm not working. I, you know, my mental health issues are so bad that I can't hold down a regular job. And, you know, my life isn't perfect. So I'm not sitting here saying that, you know, non-spanking... <laughs> non-spanking works or non-spanking doesn't fail i'm not here to tell you that but i feel like parents as a whole can fail their kids because truth be told a lot of parents i observe are not really mature enough to have kids because they're passing on generation after generation of trauma usually and they're, they're using their transference of anger from their childhoods to inflict pain on their children, um, you know, in, you know, to inflict pain on their children later on. Now, I'm noticing that because we're dealing with millennial parents here, I'm noticing that that's improving. 
and I'm noticing that there are a lot of well-behaved, well-adjusted, polite, lovely children because their parents didn't whoop their ass. Because their parents didn't whoop their ass. Not because their parents did whoop their ass. There are polite, lovely, well-adjusted children because their parents didn't whoop their children. You know, their parents have respect for their children. They were kind to their children. So what it manifested in was children that might not necessarily have a killer instinct, but who are actually very, very, you know, a lot of kids are very nice people. It's not the same anymore. Do you understand what I mean? So, you know, I'm noticing an improvement, but there are still people around saying, oh, a good ass whooping solves most of your problems. First of all, like... <sighs> I think the reason why people who have been spanked in their lives saying, oh, I went through this and I survived. I feel like the reason they tell themselves this is because, first of all, when you get spanked that hard and that often, the trauma eventually becomes so deep rooted and your emotions become so repressed, they kind of implode. And I feel like when you get spanked that hard and that often like that, and, you know, it leads to situations where you turn that negativity into something you can use, like getting a better education or getting a better job. Because you've turned it into something that you can use because your anger and your, your, all your stuff has imploded and your rage has imploded. Then you get to thinking that it's actually worked because you're able to hold down a job or, you know, you're able to do this, that and the third because you were spanked, right? But what's actually happened is that your anger has become so deep and so entrenched. The anger, the shame, the pain has become so deeply entrenched. You've internalized it. And, you know, it's so deep rooted in you that if you even begun to understand the implications of what was done to you as a child, you would go fucking nuts. Because the first layer you've got to get through is understanding that you have been traumatized in the first place. Now, remember, all your anger and the shame and the, you know, the horror that you've gone through from being spanked repeatedly and usually for really minor shit from being spanked repeatedly and with some children quite viciously. Like, so first you've got to deal with the trauma. That's, a, that's the trauma level, right? And then the added level is... um how that trauma has affected you. So you first you've got to acknowledge start I'm starting from here because it's a it's a downward thing, right? Because you have to dig deep. So first you've got to acknowledge the trauma. Then you've got to acknowledge the trauma, how the trauma has affected your body and your psyche. The amount of people who have been spanked with borderline personality disorder who don't go to therapy, who have um anxiety and depression and stunted psychological growth the amount of people that i know who have been spanked myself included with those problems are fucking wild and there are certain people who have been spanked who have grown up to be i'm sorry to say it psychopaths no actually i can't say that i can't use a clinical term for that because psychopaths are born they're not made right but there are some people, I think, I think a better word is sociopath. There are some people who legitimately, after being spanked, they legitimately exercise sociopathic tendencies. With any child that has been intimidated and shamed on that level, they have sociopathic tendencies. They can definitely have narcissistic tendencies because their psychological growth has been stunted from all them arse whoopings. And their emotions have also been stunted from all them ass whoopings. Stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about, right? So first you have to acknowledge your trauma. Then you have to acknowledge how the trauma has affected you psychologically. Then you've got to get into how it affects you physically. Because people with childhood trauma are three times likely to have heart failure or heart problems in life as adults. So you've got to get through all those layers, all those layers first you've got to acknowledge how the trauma has affected you mind body and soul then you've got to get to the fact that these things were caused 
by the people who claim to love you. So they covered up all the trauma that they gave you through those beatings, through yelling at you, through doing all these things over minor shit. You've got to kind of reconcile the fact that your parents put food on the table, put clothes on your back, paid you rent, let you live there, but essentially had you living in a prison-like environment where you couldn't express yourself and you couldn't be yourself and you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, be who you truly were without having to be conniving or without having to lie to your parents or without having to bully someone else. So you, you have to, you have to kind of come to terms with the fact that your parents made you like that. So that's the fourth level you've got to deal with. And then once you come to that realization, you've got to observe your parents' behavior before you even say anything to them. You've got to observe their behavior and observe the way that they treat you with new eyes, right? You've got to observe all of that with new eyes. So those, there are five layers to this. And then on top of that, you've got to try to confront them about what they did. And likely because they don't see, you know, because they might have been gentler with you than their parents were with them, they're not going to see what they did wrong. Or they're not going to acknowledge that what they've done wrong and they're not going to acknowledge how they've affected you or they don't want to hear about it. So then it comes to the seventh level. The seventh level is, well, if my parents won't acknowledge my pain and my parents won't acknowledge what they've done to me or how they've affected me, then do I even want a relationship with them? And this is the hardest layer to get through, the seventh layer, because at this point you are trauma bonded to your parents because of them ass whoopings. You're trauma bonded to your parents. So at that seventh level, that's the hardest part because now you've got to decide, do I want these people in my life? I'm still at the seventh point, by the way. Do I want these people in my life? And then you've got to get down to the eighth layer if I don't want these people in my life, how am I going to survive? Not even financially, because again, a lot of people have had their asses work, they have, you know, steady jobs and things like that. How am I going to survive emotionally, uh, mentally, financially? Because when you cut your parents off, essentially what you do is you isolate yourself. Essentially, what you do is you're, you isolate yourself. And not only do you isolate yourself, you isolate yourself from somebody that you've trauma bonded with. So when you make that decision, then you've got to think about how your life is going to change from there. How you're going to navigate certain situations in your life without your parents behind you. And nine times out of ten, right, you can be trauma bonded to your parents and your, your parents might not know jack shit about life because remember a lot of our parents are not mature the older ones are not mature they've never been mature you're talking about generation after generation of people having kids as teenagers generation after generation this didn't just start with gen x it's been generation after generation of people largely uneducated people largely people uneducated in the ways of, uh, of psychological understanding generation after generation of kids having kids so it's like even if they know jack shit about life even when we know this reality eighth level how do i live without them i'm isolating myself not only from them but potentially an entire community of people the only community i have ever known how the fuck am i gonna do that so we're at the eighth level of what happens when you kind of accept the reality that what your parents essentially did was trauma bond you, yeah? And then you hit the ninth level. Okay, I've decided to do this. I've decided to cut my parents off, get therapy, all that type of shit. It means you have to unpack everything all over again. And not only do you have to unpack everything all over again, we've just been at the first layer. Now it's the ninth layer. You've got to get therapy. You've got to find new friends, new ways of doing things. You have to learn to live all over again. And you have to do it without the support system that you've relied upon for most of your fucking life. All that. You've got to go through all that. Just to acknowledge the hurt that you've been subjected to. 
You've got to go through all that just to acknowledge the hurt. And that's just with your parents. There are a lot of people who have, you know, been molested by family members. There are people who have been, like, sexually abused by family members. That's, that, that's just spanking. That's just spanking that I was talking about. That is just spanking. All of that. Spanking. That's it. So it's like it's easier to just get along, to go along and to convince yourself, especially when children misbehave, especially now that children have more freedom to say what they want to say and do what they want to do. Now it's like, well, children need their asses whooped. Well, no, they don't need that. They need mature adults around them. That's what they need. But how are we going to be mature? How are we going to be mature? We had kids raising us, we're kids ourselves. How are we going to raise this younger, this younger generation without the tools? Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's easier, it's just easier to say, I needed whoopings, I prefer whoopings over being grounded. I prefer whoopings over this. It's easier to say that, or a good ass whooping solves problems. It's easier to say that than to actually admit that those whoopings didn't do you any good. There are so many examples of people who have been whooped that have grown up to, you know, to resent the people that whoops them. And then, like, instead of challenging the people who did it, they end up transferring that anger and abusing people that reminded them of the person that whooped them or reminding them of the person that disciplined them. You feel me? So it's a whole late. There are layers and layers of psychosis and borderline personality disorder and anxiousness and depression to wade through. Layers and layers of emotional reckoning to wade through. Again, this is just spankings. I haven't even hit on the other shit yet. These are just spankings. Do you understand what I'm saying? These are just spankings. Ju this is just spankings that I'm talking about. I haven't even talked about other forms of abuse yet. I haven't talked about the sexual abuse and the effect that has on you. If you're not built like me, and you're not a navel gazy type of person, and you don't have the time to navel gaze, and you don't have the time to read about psychological tools because you're trying to pay your bills, if you don't have the time for any of that, because most people don't have the time for that. Most people just want to go out, pay their bills, come home. And do not have the time for introspection. And don't have the time to research on how hitting people can traumatize you, even though you shouldn't really need that. Because if you wouldn't hit an adult, why should you hit a kid? Like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't need any of this, but... You know, if people are doing things that they can see gets them short-term results, because a spanking will, will temporarily get your kid to settle down. Do you understand what I mean? If you are the type of person that doesn't necessarily have the time for the psychological introspection, then you're going to go with short-term solutions for now. But the problem is, is that short-term solutions, sometimes they can cost you long-term benefit. And that's the hard part. So it's like in a bid to survive, you have to rely on the short term for now. You've got to rely on the violence. You've got to rely on the lies and the delusion. Short term, so that you can get from one step to the other step. But eventually it ends up costing you. Love, real love, listening, disciplining your children properly. It takes short-term effort. Short-term effort that might cost your ability to work. Short-term effort that might cost you friends and family that you've known all your life. But the long-term benefits. The long-term benefits. That's all I've got to say. That's all I've got to say. The long-term benefits, priceless. Because you get well-adjusted adults who are not perfect. Nobody's ever going to be perfect. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you spank your kids or not. 
they grow up into adults those adults are not going to be perfect but at, le but at least you will have emotionally intelligent people who will do what they do in more careful ways more resourceful ways they'll be better at adapting to their environment because they have that love behind them they have that love as a solid foundation so they'll be better able to cope in a tough world and to cope in a world where you know people are mean and people are cruel like it actually takes love to develop that type of strong foundation and emotional intelligence to develop that type of strong foundation not ass whoopings and yelling <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? We, you know, you're talking about hitting people. You save that for when you're training somebody for war. If you're not training somebody for war, what are you doing it for? That's what I'm saying. So, like, the temptation within me to just be like, like, get a fucking grip. Get a fucking grip. Like, stop trying to convince yourself that spanking is good for you due to your Stockholm Syndrome. It's all well and good me turning around to people and saying that. It's all well and good me saying that. I'm really sorry about the noise. It's all well and good me saying that, right? But... It, you know, me just saying that and me just, you know... It doesn't take into account what people are actually going through mentally and emotionally. You know, it, it, it's, it's just not understanding the nuance of why people do what they do. So that's why, fucking hell, I should have thought this through. <laughs> I should have thought this through before I started recording. That is fucking loud, bro. Oh my God. That's loud. You see, I'm used to it. That's why I, it, it never registers with me how distracting it can be for you guys to listen to that shit. But this is why, like, when I came online to talk about corporal punishment again, I wasn't going to do the whole fucking, you know, I wasn't going to do the whole attacking people thing because it's long. You know, attacking people for having different points of view is just not, gonna get anybody anywhere and it's not solving the problem it's better for me to just lay out the facts and if you want more link if you want links to the facts i can link you to my other video that's got links on it but yeah it's important to know the facts and it's important to understand how people feel from the other side never did me any harm it did you tremendous harm it just gave you a short-term solution in a tough situation and that's all it did it was not good for you. It wasn't. So, you know, I get, I, I, you know, I, I get the need to twist everything into a positive because truth be told, when you twist everything into a positive, it means you see opportunity everywhere rather than challenge. So there is a method to the madness. There is a method to you know, however you grew up or, you know, however you experienced your childhood, there is a merit in kind of saying, well, thank God for this and thank God for that. And, you know, that's carried me through life because your responses to those things during your childhood is what helped you survive. But understand, it was you that helped you survive. It wasn't your environment. It was your response to it. So if you're really going to say what you have to say, what you really need to be doing is giving yourself more credit. Because you survived. I don't care if you got spanked. I don't care if you didn't. I don't care what happened to you. If you've made it to this point, you got through it because of you. And you survived because of you. Give yourself more credit. Give yourself more credit. Don't let other people take away what you've accomplished for yourself. And there are some of you that in, in spite of the most awful abuse and the, awful, the most awful treatment, you've managed to carve out a lane for yourself out of that 
out of that trauma. Congratulate yourself. Pat yourself on the back. But don't give your parents credit for traumatizing you. Give yourself credit for how you responded and how that enabled you to survive. Let's start there. So anyway, I gotta go. You guys take care of yourselves. Peace and blessings. And I will see you in the next one. Take care. Oh yeah. Listen man. You guys need to go onto my fucking. My fucking um, Empress Justice Tarot channel. You need to go onto my readings. Baby I'm sacrificing a lot to tell you guys the truth. I could have I could have kept my mouth shut about this Havana Syndrome thing. And have my stall on ITV. But it didn't happen like that. I'll tell you more about that when the time is right. But go on, go on to my Empress Justice Tarot. Actually support someone who's going to tell you the truth and not what you want to hear. Support me. Do what you're supposed to be doing as a community. Support me. Help me out here. Damn. But anyway, I've got to go. I love you guys very much. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.